Everybody knows that in horror movies, you need the three Bs. Blood, beasts, and boobs. And Night Beast has all of them. Tonight on... Big Movie Mania! Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B-Movie Mania. And now, B-Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Paul Brooks, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Good day, good evening, B-Movie Maniacs, wherever you may be. Welcome once again to B-Movie Mania. I am your host for this evening, Paul A. Brooks, and joining me as always, Mr. Mike Hayes. Pew, pew, pew! Mr. Jason Hulls. Howdy. And Chris Hudson, give me some ice clinkies, would you please? Clinky, clinky, clink. <laughs> I got you covered. Hashtag ice clinkies. Mm. It's great Foley work there. How's everybody doing tonight? I'm Good. doing. I'm doing extra great. I'm drinking some crystal clear Pepsi with gin. Are you serious? What's the, what's that like, Mike? It's fine. I put a little Malibu in there too. I thought it might round out the flavor. It's pretty good. Huh? Not bad. A little throwback to the '90s. Well, guys, we got a lot to talk about tonight because we watched a film entitled Night Beast, and we actually have a special guest joining us this evening. He will be here momentarily. His name is Richard Bain. He is a Los Angeles comedian and actor, and he's going to be joining us in just a second to chat about Night Beast. And guys, I want to get some quick takes out of you in just a second. But first, there's sort of this titillating piece of trivia associated with Night Beast, and I figure let's just get the elephant out of the room. There is a uh, filmmaker who got their start with the film that we're discussing tonight, Don Dohler's Night Beast. And Chris, I believe you, uh, I believe you made the research discovery first, so uh, I give you the floor. <clears throat> hey, thanks, Paul. When I watched the credits, I was going to make the, uh, the composer's name of Jeffrey Abrams came up, and I was going to make a joke to myself about, oh, J.J. Abrams did the music for this movie. And then I found out he actually did. So, A young, weird. I think maybe 16-year-old J.J. Yeah. Abrams contacted filmmaker Don Dohler and said, can I do the movie or the music for Night Beast? And he did. Guess that turned out pretty well for him. <laughs> not so bad. Not so bad. All right, guys, let's get some quick takes. Quick takes. Mike Hayes, what'd you think of Night Beast? I thought Night Beast was a very fun movie. My biggest problem is that fucking laser gun goes bye-bye <laughs> way too quick. <laughs> oh, God. That was the saddest part of the movie. Jay. Uh, I don't know if this is like a proper quick take or more of like a question, but it occurred to me very early that Night Beast dresses in clothes and uses a laser gun. So he's got to have like higher thought capability. So why is he so mean? <laughs> like he kills all these people. Why, Night Beast? Why are you so mean? I can tell you why, Jay. Because because Night Beast was just cruising around the solar system in his in his little space truck and he hits an asteroid and then it blows <laughs> up when it crash lands. Of course, you're going to be pissed and kill people. It's kind of like road rage, but in space. Yeah, All right. space rage. Thank you. Thank you for answering that, Chris. All right, my quick take. I liked it. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm, thank gl you. I'm glad we went through all of that for that. That was <laughs> that was great. Wow. We have a lot to unpack with this thing. So let's bring in our special guest. His name is Richard Bain, and he's joining me here. Richard, welcome to B-Movie Mania. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Richard. Hey, Richard. Hey, Richard. Uh, Richard, tell uh, our maniacs out there, that's what we call our viewers, because they're <laughs> maniacal about our show. Tell them a little bit uh, about yourself, what, what you're doing out here in Los Angeles. Um, I'm a comedian. Um, I've been out here for like... Uh, six years um i don't know i've just been making movies and doing comedy stuff since i was a little kid so it's just one of those things where i've kind of always done dumb shit <laughs> and you're also 
One of the reasons that I wanted to have you on this particular episode for Night Beast, Night Beast is a trauma film, and you yourself have some experience uh, actually making a trauma movie, or, or I want to make sure I get this right, like getting some sort of distribution deal with yeah. trauma? Or? Yeah, we made it for... Um, it was so weird. It's just like we made this sketch, and it was about a, a car salesman who could... Who were, who made a deal with the devil to so he could sell any car, um, but he had to like sell this F- Ford Topaz to get his soul back. It's really stupid, <laughs> and like <laughs> re- it's just dumb. It was the dumbest thing we could think of, and like we put it on Funny or Die, and Will Ferrell picked it as his like top weekly favorite video or whatever that'll get some attention it did it dude it got us like over a million views in like a week people were like you guys should do a movie and we were like yeah okay so like we didn't write anything we just like improv <laughs> this whole movie uh we we actually premiered it Patton oswald hosted a weekend at the new beverly and he premiered it with um american movie Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah and he, like, wow. did this whole that's... Q&A thing at the end, and it was so cool, dude. Yeah. I mean, awesome. we were just, like, floored to be a part of it. And then uh, submitted it to uh, Trauma Dance. Yeah. And then Lloyd Kaufman saw that saw it there and was like, oh, I think it's great. And, like, <laughs> bought it, like, just distributed it, like, bought it for distribution, you wow. know, so we nice. could... We, it's not like we made money or anything like that. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, you got a trauma movie. So exactly, that's... dude. We grew up on that shit. Like me and the guy, Bobby Hacker is the director, and then the two um, Travis Jones and Ty Jones, their brothers. I we just sit, the movie is basically us just kind of filming them together because they're just these mad, crazy comedy geniuses. Did you get a chance to meet Lord Kaufman? I didn't. No, I did. I didn't meet him. Well, he actually does the opening and closing narration for our podcast. Oh, really? Yeah, we just It's like we meet him every week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's on the show every week. All right. So, Richard, guys, like I said, we got a lot to talk about. Let's get right into it. Oh, Night wait, wait, Beast. Wait, Paul, Paul, wait, wait, Paul, what? you can't skip you can't skip the thing we do every time there's a guest on. What? All right. Hey, hey, Richard. Yeah. L- this is this is Mike. Please let me say first of all, it is great to have you on. Um, but we you. do a segment every time we have a guest on, and that segment is what does Paul smell like? That's so could you please share with us segment. the listening audience uh, what Paul smells like tonight? Hmm. It smells like um, like pineapple chicken pizza. That's accurate because oh, me and Richard wow. just had that. And that was sniff takes. Sniff takes. <laughs> all right, Mike. Can we get into it? Yeah, we got the segment. You know, tried to get past it. We got it though. So I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> I don't mean like fight. I mean like get into the yeah. Hey, we know plot. What, we know what you smell like now. That's all that right. matters. So, so this is the first trauma movie we've done, right? You know, so this is kind of interesting because yes, this is definitely the first trauma movie that that we've done. But I don't a hundred percent know if you would consider it an official trauma movie in the sense that. They they may have just sort of distributed it after the fact. Yeah, yeah, that's what I read. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't think Lloyd was involved in making it in, in any way, really. Right, and probably a lot of their movies are like that. Probably, now. yeah. Even. Well, hey, the most important question though is, was it ever on USA Up All Night? <laughs> oh my gosh. USA up all night. <laughs> the Ronda Shear version was. <laughs> Dude, the I best. love that. I, I grew up on that shit. Oh yeah. Go ahead, Jay. Uh, I was just going to say, you know, um, I remember last week we were all kind of rolling our eyes a little bit because of the pace of the of the film, the slow pace <laughs> of the killing of Satan. This is like the exact opposite. Like oh they just hit the gas from <laughs> yes. like the word go. And I like that. I, I had to pause it at some point um, to check something. And I realized I was over halfway through the movie and I had it, it felt nothing like anywhere near that right. way through. It was it's beautiful. Yeah, the pace the pace keeps up pretty good starting with the very beginning. We we get a shot of an explosion and a spaceship just hauling ass through the Milky Way. Just like cruising. you see Jupiter and then like Earth in like 4 seconds later. L- quite literally. Like it's just flying. And unfortunately, like Chris alluded to earlier, 
knocks into an asteroid, what are the chances? <laughs> Whoops. And ends up on our blue dot. Yeah. And then proceeds to explode for two minutes straight. <laughs> oh, God. Was it only two minutes? It felt like way longer. <laughs> But it was beautiful the whole time. Campers see it. Police see it. No one's an actor. It's okay. Everyone wanders out to go see what this thing is. Let's check and it out. They just get like, if I may go into this, Paul. Sure. The uh, the night beast just pops right out of there with his disco laser gun and just opens up like immediately. Yeah. And even terrorizes some kids that are out way past their bedtime. He murders yeah, he r- children. <laughs> <laughs> I thought those kids were going to be like part of the whole movie. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So back up for a second. We get introduced uh, right after this crash landing. We see these campers. They run to the sheriff's department where we get introduced to one of our main characters, Sheriff Jack Cinder. We're going to have to get out there. You better call Lisa, Sheriff. I'll let her sleep. She's used to desk work. She is a deputy, and she is qualified. All right, I'll call her. You go try to round up a few more men. Right. Who has a badass look, if I do say so myself. And a badass (laughs) fro, really. Yeah, he looks like John Holmes. (laughs) <laughs> he does look like John Holmes. He, he looks like if Kurt Vonnegut went camping. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, they go to investigate this crash, and we get into our first uh, pretty intense laser battle. Lots of uh, rifles, lots of laser blasts going it's on. It's pretty one-sided, though. I mean, that laser just shoots <laughs> everything. And what does it look like, Chris? Like when so when somebody gets hit with Night Beast laser blast, what does that look like? It's a little inconsistent and it leaves some ashes, but oh yeah, I guess it's kind of a disco effect. It's a fucking disco inferno. It looks like... It's it, totally <laughs> disco. It's insane. We've all seen Night Beast's outfit. Disco's his thing. I mean, bullets are... It, he's impenetrable with bullets, right? Right. We should point that and out. It, it took him yeah. like four hours to figure that out. Where it's <laughs> yeah. Like, All right, we shot him, and I was thinking, Jesus, what kind of fucking sheriff brings in a town person to shoot for him? You know, he's like, I can't hit him with my regular gun. Pete yeah. Peterson has to shoot him or whatever. <laughs> Jack, uh, Bill Perkins, I Perkins, think. Perkins, yeah. Perkins. yeah. Old Farmer Perkins. Old far- <laughs> and he doesn't, and he's like, shoot him in the head or the gun. He's like, uh, shoot him in the gun. <laughs> Don't shoot him in the head. That would end this. All I want you to do is get that weapon out of the thing's hand. Think you can do it, Bill? You bet your ass I can do it. Why don't you just blow the thing's head off, Dad? Hey, get the weapon first, then blow the thing's head off. <laughs> Yeah, well, you get the impression that this is probably a pretty small town. There's not much of a police force. So when something major like this breaks out, you just got to call some good old boys out there to to help you take care of it. Sacrifice your son, Perkins. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I I hear Perkins had a a, a snapshot in the Korean conflict. Let's get him out here. Maybe his little boy, too. (laughs) Hey, can we back up just a moment here? Back to when uh, Night Beast first arrives and he starts shooting some dudes. And Uncle David's driving out with his, you know, niece and nephew. Oh, I, yeah. I can only Fuck assume they're his niece and nephew. I don't know. The guy's kind of creepy. Well, what is up Night Beast's ass? I mean, he, okay, he shoots those campers, no problem. But he fucking mauls Uncle David and just plops him on the hood of his car <laughs> where his <laughs> kids are in the back seat. Like, why are they? Why that is- was my whole point in the quick take thing. Like, he's so mean. He's <laughs> just an asshole. <laughs> Why, Night Beast? Why are you yeah, so mean? And, and spoiler alert, it's never explained why he's so, like, hostile, like, for no reason, right. really. He's smart enough to use lasers and wear clothes, but every other not, characteristic not of a... fly mis- a spaceship. Yeah, well, true. Yeah, totally of course. totally do that. And, okay, Chris, while the kids are running around and, and Night Beast <laughs> is, like, just chasing people through different set pieces real, real quick, and there's fog blowing everywhere, like, you know, you, you, there's a dude who gets killed on his front porch... And that woman screams. She looks through the f- front door, the screen door, and she starts screaming. That is one of the most annoying sounds I have ever heard in my life. just kept going well the crazy thing is that woman's hearing is superhuman because she heard those kids running from like a mile away that was so funny (laughs) they're running there's someone running outside 
<laughs> as they're as they're necking on the couch next to the phone. She was clearly not that into him. He's got a boner, and he's like, "Yeah, they're running. Who cares?" <laughs> uh, I had a, I had a pretty dark thought at this point in the movie, real early on. You know, speculating what the the plot's gonna be. And I was really hoping when that guy went out with that gun, he was going to shoot those kids because I thought I Whoa, thought it would be a Mike. real I thought it'd be a real good B plot if that guy had really not much to do with the, the the main story fighting night beast, but he just had to fucking deal with the fact that he shot two innocent kids and he's just wandering the forest trying to figure out how he could make up for his you know what he had done, and then maybe at the end he redeems himself by killing night beast. Ooh, yeah, well, you know, thing. that would be kind of funny, but, you know, as luck would have it, Mike, there actually kind of is a subplot of a townsperson who just likes to kill people indiscriminately. Well, not indiscriminately. <laughs> oh, that, is awk- that, that was uncomfortable, that guy. We will certainly get there. We will certainly get there. Um, I have it in my notes. It just says, Night Beast, not afraid to kill kids. He just goes for no. it. He shoots them oh, in yeah. the goddamn car. Yeah. That, yeah. He blow, <laughs> He not only kills the kids, but like a 77 gremlin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's a classic now. That's that's serious business. It's really unfortunate <laughs> stuff. And I want to point out that there's also some inconsistencies here too, because if you'll what? recall in the first space uh, space scene, um, like shootout scene with the farmers and and the cops and Night Beast, Sheriff Jack and Deputy Lisa, who is a hot tamale, I have to say, <laughs> they are sort of crouched behind some like logs out in the forest trying to trying to hide from night beast laser blast and when when the when the laser blasts hit the like log in front of them some sparks go up and you know some smoke and stuff like that but it doesn't like incinerate but if he shoots a car like a freaking huge station wagon the whole car is just instantly gone I- I wondered about that, too, because I wondered why the force was even still a thing once Night Beast finished shooting. I mean, it should, <laughs> right. by rights, there should have been no force left. But we see it yeah. again and again and again. Thinking about this now, maybe the reason Night Beast was so, ma- was so mad is because of his asymmetrical dental layout. You know, oh. it, it, looked, <laughs> it looked like Grandpa chewed on a mason jar. Did you guys like the way Night Beast looked? Oh, yeah, yeah. He lo- I thought it looked pretty cool. Yeah, I, I think so. I would have liked to have seen more Night Beast, but I don't think you could. And I mean, it barely holds up as it is. Yeah, although that 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 outfit is amazing. I wanted to see more of that. <laughs> in this in this early segment, when like the cops and the posse are running after Night Beast and he's killing them and dissolving them and people are dying, there's a guy in the film who gets slapped by Night Beast and <laughs> Night Beast slaps his face off. Oh. Oh, That's the yes. second movie in a row we've done where someone has had their face slapped <laughs> off. This is true. <laughs> it's very, uh, his outfit is very Mork and Mindy. And That's it's, true. And it's 82. It I think it's 82. 82. That's like the same time frame. So that guy was probably just like, eh, I don't know, that's what aliens wear. Borrowing yeah. a little bit, yeah. <laughs> After this initial encounter, let's put it, the, the Sheriff Jack and... Uh, Deputy Lisa, and we haven't pointed out one of our other main characters. Uh, shit, I'm blanking on his name right now. Who's who's Steven? the guy that helps him out? Jamie, Jamie or Steven? Jamie, yeah. yes. Jamie, Steven's the doctor. Yeah. Right, Jamie. Sort of a younger, you know, cool dude in like a flannel shirt who, I don't think he works at the sheriff's d- department. I think he just sort of helps out with stuff. <laughs> no, yeah, because at some point he asked if he was deputized after, like, saving him. Yeah. Right. Also, also, Jamie's girlfriend was, uh, again, another hot tamale. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so they bring in uh, Bill Perkins and a couple of his boys to help deal with their uh, Night Beast problem. And, Richard, what, what happens uh, during this encounter? <laughs> um, Jimmy gets killed. Yes, he does. And, and that's okay. old Perkins' son. Yeah. Oh. Bill's pretty upset. But you know what? It gives him a, it gives him sort of a renewed focus to fight the night beast. Oh yeah! And uh, Mike, rage. this is this is pretty se- uh, major plot point here. What happens? Well, he shoots the gun out of his hand, and it's he does. goddamn saddest part of the movie. The, it's, it's 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 the worst decision the filmmakers made. Yeah. All right. So if I'm <laughs> if I'm picking up on this correctly, it sounds like at least Chris and Mike. I'm not sure who else, but it sounds like some of you. Wanted this to be 90 minutes of just Night Beast shooting his gun just without any sort of mercy on anybody. That was the first half hour of the movie, and it was great. I could watch that for another hour easily. 
if if not that, at least he needed to get his gun like back or something. Like something needed yeah. to happen where he got that technology back. Because if he's if he's sending these kids to the upside down with his this disco inferno gun, then you know <laughs> I, I just want to see what you know, I just want to keep it happening. <laughs> I think probably the reason that you guys feel this way is that because it it kind of goes against standard film formula convention. Normally, you want your heroes to to be getting in hotter and hotter water. And when halfway or a half hour through the movie, they suddenly make it a lot easier for themselves. That's sort of against the grain of of how you want to portray your heroes as what they have to go up against, if that makes sense. You know, that's a good point, Paul. Mm, Maybe what they should have done was had Night Beast just tear people apart in the beginning for a half an hour and then bring out the big guns. Yeah, like Night Beast gets upset at some point, and he's like, Argh! and he has to go back to the wreckage of his ship, and then he gets the gun and starts shooting people. Right. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that would make more sense, yeah. but it didn't happen. What can you do? Yeah. Well, I think we're kind of t- coming up to the biggest problem I had with the movie. What's that? Well, it's Perkins with a, he's a crack shot, kills the gun, and then what, everyone just kind of leaves. They don't press their advantage <laughs> and kill Night Beast. They just let him go. Yeah, it's bullshit. He's right there in a reflective disco outfit. To me, that's one of the best parts of the movie. Like, Night Beast gets his gunshot out of his hand, and the look on his face is just like, oh, shit. (laughs) Like, what am I going to do now? It's kind of the same as every other look on his face. Yeah, Yeah, he's got one facial expression. (laughs) I guess that one facial expression works best for that one particular shot. (laughs) Maybe you just imprinted your own emotion on Night Beast's performance. (laughs) I believe I did. Well, well, I... I think what happens next, like, it continues It continues to defy my expectations about how a movie like this should go. Because I think we cut to like the mayor, and he's having the governor over for a big party. Right, So I'm yes. thinking, hey, we're going to have lots more victims for the Night Beast. No. Right. Yeah. No. No, not at all. But you know what's great about that, I, I will say? I, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm getting ahead of myself here, but like they eventually have that party, right? Yeah. You know, Sheriff Jack Cinder is a no-nonsense kind of guy. And he just, or one of them spouts a story about there being poison in the air or something. I love the way that party cleared out. <laughs> yeah, like, they were they gone instantly. Ladies and gentlemen, may I please have your attention? I'm sorry to interrupt this lovely party, but I'm afraid we're going to have to ask everyone to leave. We've just discovered that poison gas is leaking from the old mines, and for your own safety, we're evacuating the town. <laughs> Those people took off. <laughs> like, that was awesome. Hey, if there's poison gas in the air, you got to get out of town. Yeah, yeah. At this point, when, the, when we get introduced to the party, we, it, literally the movie takes on the plot of Jaws at this point, where it's, <laughs> it's we can't close the party, the party's got to happen, blah, 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 I don't care, just do what you need to do. It's just, it's li- very literally the plot of Jaws. Yeah, he doesn't really buy the whole thing, and pretty much like, so they try to get him to cancel it, they don't cancel it, and then we get into Jack goes looking for a, one of the corpses, but right. they don't find it. Yeah, and that's when that guy Drago rolls up on his bike oh, and just starts oh, giving yeah. just <laughs> giving him a bunch of crap for no reason. <laughs> and not just that, but out in the middle of the woods. What about it, Cinder? You gonna take me off my bike? Stay out of my way, Drago. I'm in no mood for your crap. You know what I say, Sheriff? Go to hell. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. That's too good for you. It's a crime scene, and he's like, fuck you, Sheriff. (laughs) (laughs) This is also the scene where we get introduced to George Stover's character, and George Stover is in, I think, every single Don Dohler movie that's ever been made. And he's in this one as sort of like a, I guess like a doctor slash scientist. It was kind of unclear to me. Yeah, he seemed like kind of like the the second do- doctor in charge. Yeah. Uh, Mike, let me ask you. We're talking about Drago right now. What the hell is Drago's problem? Like, what's what, he's just got a tood. He his his problem probably is that he he feels inadequate. Uh, you know, he he does the the women he likes don't like him back. Uh, he tries to feel macho around other men, but that's not working now. His cool leather jacket doesn't seem to get him as much street cred as he wants. He's trying to make his motorbike look his motorbike look real cool, but that thing isn't all that great. That's from Snake Eater, and, you know. And the gas prices are 
bloated right now, so even that hog is costing him some money to get across town. Plus, his mom's been a real bitch, as he said earlier in the movie. And it's just like, like she wants him out of the house, but he still wants to live there. Why not, right? She grew him. Why not keep growing him? It doesn't make any sense to him. He doesn't get why society doesn't see what he sees. Yeah, so he's he's just kind of the town's bad apple. He's he's just a bad well, apple. Yeah, and so Jamie is dating Drago's girl. So he goes to check on his girlfriend who and who Drago just left and Drago watches this whole thing happen. So he he's got confirmation that there's a well, cheating on. situation. Well, one moment real, real quick Jay before we get into what, you know, Drago does. You know, Drago visits the girl, slaps her around a little bit, and then Jamie right. goes in to check on her. She just says that that he was hassling her. Yeah, not slapping her around and ripping her clothes yeah, off. Yeah, like that looked yeah. more like attempted rape, not not some hassling. <laughs> well, it's right. 1982, you know, oh, yeah. that's a very 1982 comment. So while this is happening, um, Drago's watching. You know, he knows that the sheriff and Jamie are there. And as soon as they leave, Drago rolls back in. She's naked, getting her stuff together to leave town. Yeah, why is she naked? Why is she completely <laughs> Wait, naked? Don't, don't don't you guys pack naked all the time I mean, when you go on a trip? <laughs> Take off all my... You, you gotta put stuff in yeah, the suitcase. You pack all your clothes in the suitcase, and then whatever's left, that's what you put on. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> so, Drago comes back in, and it's a little, like, confusing the way they shoot it, but he does kill her. He strangles yeah. her. Yeah. yeah. But you don't really see it. Yeah, do we do we actually know that he was dating her, or or is it more like Tammy and the T Rex situation, where you know the punk guy is like claiming her as a as his property, but really she's not? Drago comes in at one point and says something, and and she says, "I you know I told you I'm not seeing you anymore," or something like that. Yeah, another it's a Tammy scenario here. Brooke Shields all over again. Yeah, yep. <laughs> except Denise Richards. Oh yeah, that too. <laughs> Oops. I want to say that the. Actual party with the governor is next. Do I have that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And just so you guys, if you remember, the governor prefers vodka and water. Mild, mild, mild. <laughs> mild. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Governor, would you care for a drink? Mary Jane makes a mean Manhattan. Uh, the governor prefers vodka and water. Mild, please. Mary Jane, would you get the governor a vodka and water? Mild. I do love that. Uh, <laughs> when uh, the mayor's or the governor's assistant says he doesn't drink on the job, that Bertie and his girlfriend say they always drink on the job. Now, this is the mayor <laughs> and his girlfriend. Yeah, I was just going to say, we should probably point out that the mayor, Bertie, and his girlfriend, uh, Mary Jane, are a couple of lushes. They enjoy the booze. I want another drink, Bertie. You don't need another drink. You're drunk already. Maybe I ought to call the governor or something. I apologize. Bertie. Ah! Are you going to get me another drink? Right! The movie's called Night Beast, so I'm thinking, hey, we're just going to fight him during the night. We're safe during the day. Oh, hell no. No, <laughs> Night Beast just sneaking up behind people, slapping their arms off, mauling their faces, stealing some whiskey, I guess. I don't know what's up with that. Oh, right, outside the doctor's office. Yeah. The doctors are yeah. examining the body that they finally found. And Night Beast is on that. Like, Ooh. even the doctor's office looks like someone's house. It was someone's <laughs> yeah. house. There's no doubt. Yeah. So some guy goes to get whiskey for a patient with a broken leg. Yeah. Night Beast claws the crap Rams. out of him and knocks his arm off. No, yeah, no, he literally, Jay, that's what you just said is right. He knocks his arm off. He, like, patty caked his arm off. It just <laughs> fell off. He didn't patty claw cake. it. He didn't slash it. It just, it just it was fell off. That's why I never leave my whiskey in the backseat of the car. <laughs> Keep it up front. <laughs> Jamie finds out that, you know, his new girl is, is dead because they, they bring her into the, the doctor's office to see if there's anything they can do. They can't. She's dead. Um, and so he goes after Drago. And, man, Drago is, like, chilling on his hog, drinking a bud. And Jamie just comes flying out of nowhere. I mean, like, it's a dirt bike. You would think that you would hear it coming. Just, that was such a great moment. He was. rolls up in, in, like, in a split second. Like, yeah, he's there. Jamie is off that bike, punching him in the face. Yeah, it was a pretty good fight scene. He ends up beating the shit out of him. Yeah. He, uh... Knocks him out, and he, oh, he bashes his head on the in the. It's just like grass. <laughs> that was brutal. It's just grass, and he's just like smashing his face in dirt, and like. So he, he, I mean, he gets beat up pretty bad, but at some point, Jamie just kind of leaves him alone, doesn't he? It's the same. It's like with the 
fucking night beast. It's like yeah. they just let him run off, and then it, you gotta like kill these motherfuckers, you know? Yeah, it's a rookie mistake. Rookie yeah. Why wouldn't you like Jamie. take Drago with you back to the sheriff, who you're best buds with, and be like, "He killed my girl. Fucking yeah. lock him up." Like, let's cut his fingers there's off. There's no room on that dirt bike to haul him back to jail. <laughs> so Ugh. we cut to uh, George Silver's character, and I, it's I know my that favorite part. I, that's his name. I don't even remember his character's name in the movie. Stephen. Uh, Stephen. Yes, thank Steven, you. Yeah. And Ruth are in their. I guess their medical facility, which just looks like a house to me. Yeah. It doesn't house. make any yeah. sense because because they are supposedly loading up all of the equipment, quote unquote, and they need to do that before they can leave town. And that doesn't make any sense in any universe to me of why you couldn't just leave the equipment for a bit and come back once Night Beast is done. <laughs> yeah, but they're trying to do some stuff in there and Night Beast apparently gets into the house somehow I think he raids their fridge. Raids the fridge. <laughs> pigs <Yeah>. out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, what I love about this is is Stephen and Ruth are in their basement hiding. Night Beast makes some noise, and then I guess he's gone. They say, oh, yeah, Night Beast is gone. So Stephen sneaks upstairs, full on opens the door. There's Night Beast just glaring right at him. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, oh, shit. And he goes, he looked at me. <laughs> yeah. I think he says, I think George Dover says, I don't think he saw me or something like that. But no, they're staring goes, right at him. He did him. see me. He goes, he, he saw me. <laughs> okay. Because they like, yeah, it's like this weird, they look at each other. Right. And it just like, ah! it's like they shared a moment. Yeah, but like, <laughs> not, like together. the sexual, let's just say this the sexual <laughs> tension between Ruth and Steven is palatable yeah. it's oh my god they would die for each other but yet scared to tell the other one how much they feel about the other one this is true i would have really enjoyed a spin-off movie with those two it's not too late paul yeah it kind of is <laughs> some erotic fan fiction maybe Ooh. hey don't get me started because i'm kind of known for that on this on this program <laughs> yep. they're in this basement night beast comes down there it looks like they're in within like three feet of each other, but for some reason they like nobody night bees can't find them. I love this part. Steven oh, goes over to what is it like a the washing machine or something? Yeah. And fra phrase the wires. Well, well the way the way the, the scene looks like it's built, he has to walk past the night beast to get to the wires. Right. So night beast probably just has his back turned and Steven sneaks past and phrase the wires and puts it on the ground. I mean, this is really the only idea anyone's had that's really had an effect on the Night Beast. Yeah, I and have in my he, notes, it says George Stover's basement MacGyver skills. Pretty much. And he puts water on the ground, Night Beast walks into it, gets zapped. It, it was something like this. <laughs> Accurate. But it doesn't kill him. It doesn't kill him, though. No, this isn't the, no. the thing from another world. Are we at the part where, where does this fit in with uh, Jack and Lisa? Uh, that's right now. That's now. now. Yep. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Jack and Lisa are, they're like at a house, like checking on someone, right? Well, they find a body in the middle of the road. Oh, right, yeah. They, they find the body, and then I have in my notes that they're running from the night beast through the woods. Lisa, don't say a word. Just turn around slowly. Follow me. Now! When I was watching them run, I was like, oh, he just made it so, like, she's his laser shield. <laughs> He's like a pussy. He's a piece of shit. Uh, they're, they're hauling ass away from Night Beast. And, Chris, if you'll recall, something uh, rather unfortunate happens uh, while they're trying to run through the woods. Yeah, um, well, if I remember how the sheriff acted, he gets a Charlie horse. And it's <laughs> no, really tough to no. run. <laughs> No, I remember now. Sorry. He falls down a giant cliff that was right there in front of him. <laughs> oh, that's right. Well, if by giant cliff you mean like a maybe a 15-foot incline. It was kind of a gentle slope, really. It, he was just running. Like, he just ran off the edge. Like, <laughs> like there's no way he didn't see it. So, like, he's like, he's like hanging onto this branch. Lisa didn't fall, so she's still, like, on solid ground. Yeah, because she's not a dumb idiot. <laughs> and, and he goes, Lisa, just keep going. And she's like, all right, see ya. She just takes off. Yeah. Oh, Jack! Oh, my God! Keep going, Lisa. Keep going. I got the impression watching this, 
you know, that, that they were going to get separated for maybe the rest of the movie. But no, Jack sort of like slides down the eight foot incline, gets his Charlie <laughs> horse and he's like, oh, that sucked and keeps going, basically. <laughs> and they get reunited in like 10 seconds. Yeah, he catches up to her like it's nothing. That, like this leads me. I, I want to make sure I get this line right. This was one of my favorite lines. I think I have. I wrote it down right. They're talking, and Jack wants to go to the doctor, and Lisa says her house is closer. You know, because he's wounded, right? He's bleeding, right? And and so Lisa says her house is closer, and Jack says, "I don't care where we go. Just take me somewhere, <laughs> like, anywhere. Like, no. It doesn't matter. Take me to Chuck E. Cheese." Right, you do want to go to the doctor here. Like Lisa's house ends up pretty good for him, but um, the doctor's not a bad idea. And it leads to what is, honestly, in my opinion, maybe the most uncomfortable sex scene in film history. <laughs> honestly, it, I, yeah, it was hard. I could only like jerk off to it once. You know? <laughs> hey, we all have our limits, you know. You just um, feel weird. I, I want to go into this in great detail. So um, <laughs> Please let, me, let me touch on some stuff here. Chris, help me out with, with how this sort of uh, evolves into a romantic affair. Because Jack has his leg hurt. And so they go in and what? They're just trying to patch it up, right? Yeah. Well, let's just say I hope you're a fan of whitey tighties because uh <laughs> chris get sensual with it come on <laughs> well, i need explicit detail for <laughs> all of this detail. well lisa notices the gaping wound on his on jack's leg and it's a pretty nasty gash <laughs> it's a pretty nasty gash that's a really nasty gash he's got those pants had better come off so <laughs> ja jack is uh, taken aback a bit jack sits down on the bed lisa kneels down in front of him and slowly grabs his belt buckle, <laughs> pulling the leather strap through the buckle. And Jack says, wait, what are you doing? And Lisa says, we got to get these pants off. That's a nasty gash you have. <laughs> so, so he True. leans back and lets Lisa take full control of his pants, which suddenly disappear <laughs> real yeah. quick. It's a nasty gash you have there. Let me get some alcohol and cotton. Jack lays down. I took a photo of, of Jack laying down, and I'm going to let's I want to make sure I post it uh, under the uh, episode here so that everybody can get a, a good look at uh, just, you know, how irresistible he looks with his pants off. <laughs> but, but hey, I, I got a question real quick. I don't know. Maybe it's just my mind making things up, but I was really. Do we see what Lisa wears under her uniform? Does she just not wear any underwear? Not at all? much. Or is yeah, that no bra either. So the official uniform, I guess. And, the, the <laughs> and doesn't Jack actually fall asleep? For, oh yeah, for her like fifteen second shower, yeah. and she yeah. comes yeah. out. He's and, got yeah. a towel wrapped around her. He's just lounging on the bed. Richard, make this happen. They, then they fuck, dude. <laughs> they, they, she goes. <laughs> She's like, or he's like, you know, I've never looked at you in this way before. <laughs> you know, you're a very attractive girl, Lisa. Yeah, that's it. I guess I better get dressed now, huh? No. You know, you're a very attractive girl, Lisa. I don't, I mean, it's 82, so right. like AIDS hasn't really hit yet. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, if anyone makes it big and eventually works with J.J. Abrams, someone needs to ask him if he composed the Night Beast love theme. Yeah, you know, I was wondering that myself. Yeah. yeah. My follow-up question after you guys were done talking about this was the main big question. How fucking sprung was J.J. Abrams' 16-year-old boater while he was scoring this scene? Hell yeah. Like, that Woody was yeah. bonkers. I'm I'm going to have to, you know, Bad Robot is here in Los Angeles somewhere. I think I'm going to have to go down to uh, Bad Robot Studios and see if I can get a meeting with him just to get some answers to some of these questions we got. Yeah, we deserve to know. And they did the classic uh, naked standing yeah. where you're just standing, yeah. holding each other naked. <laughs> like, all right. And he's bleeding from the thigh. <laughs> and, and I want to point out, Lisa took a shower. He did not. He did so not. Yeah. He's got to be stanky. <laughs> he's gross. That that gash is nasty. Now her gash is nasty. Oh, you know, <laughs> I think we had an understanding of what Chris was. You didn't have to take it over the line there. 
<laughs> um, yeah, they're they're going at it. I guess that's it. But I kind of just want to keep talking about the sex scene for like another twenty well, minutes. I, I, well, I think it really inspired Neil Breen's love love scenes. Talking about standing yeah. love scene with blood, like yeah. and tan lines. Yep, and, and ass crack <laughs> and tan uh, lines. Unfortunately, I hate to say it, these are not the two most attractive people in the world to be placed in a sex scene. Not even in the movie. I mean, not even 1982. I'll take that Asian lady over the the, the uh, sheriff's girl. Oh, I would have I would have taken Birdie and Mary Jane for like a 45 oh, yeah. minute Birdie scene. all day, dude. Those eyes. Speaking right. of Birdie, I think the next scene is the yep. mayor's. Birdie and Mary Jane just drinking on the couch. He's, he's reeling. He's like, oh, I gotta call the governor and apologize, but he's also a Shit house drunk. <laughs> maybe you ought to write the governor a letter of apology. Mm. Or maybe you ought to hire a writer to write it for you. Mm. That's what politicians do, don't they? Steven shows up. I, you know, I, and another thing I was thinking about, like, everyone's really must, they must be close because everyone's really trying to get the, the mayor and Mary Jane to leave and they just won't. Like, right. people keep coming over trying to save them. <laughs> And they just do not give a shit. Damn it, Mary Jane. Why aren't you two out of town? Don't you realize you're in danger here? Everybody else is gone. But you're still here, Stephen. And so's Bertie. And so am I. We can have a little party. Just the three of us. They just want to sit and drink? They do. And Stephen finally leaves. And then Mary Jane hears a noise in the basement. And so she wanders down to the basement and she keeps going, Stephen? Stephen, <laughs> is that you? Like, Well, it must be Stephen. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, I tried to warn you, and then I went and hid in your basement. So she just wanders down there trying to find him. Yeah, there's the Night Beast hanging out in the basement. <laughs> Night Beast is back. Night Why does he keep back. hanging out in basements? That's a good question. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool down there. So Mary Jane dies. The, the mayor wakes up from all the screaming. He goes down there, and the Night Beast just pops his head right off. Dude, probably the best death of yeah, the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was awesome. Yeah. That head just pops right off. I think Jack and Lisa show up then, and they see the bodies, but nothing really happens after that with that. They're just like, ah, and then they go back to the police station. Yeah. Can I just say right now that I'm really glad that Jack and Lisa's newfound love doesn't get in the way of their professionalism? That's true. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they still got a job to do, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. They just flip the switch back to pro, and yep. boom, it's all back business. To, back to business. They're, they're at the police station. And they f just kind of make the plan. They're like, hey, we're going to electrocute this thing. And so they make the they need some kind of coil from the power station. Oh, yeah. The power station. Everyone's just going to do stuff off screen, leaving Lisa as the lookout. But guess who shows up? It's not Night Beast. I think oh, it was no. the real Night Beast is who that was. <laughs> yeah, could be the real Night Beast, Drago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Drago shows up and just beats the shit out of Lisa. Yeah. Like... God. <laughs> she is a deputy. I mean, clearly, well, I guess he doesn't care at this yeah, point. He Dra already killed Drago somebody. Drago is just off the hook now. He's... I'd, I, I would fear for the Night Beast if Drago ran across Night Beast. They never really... Are they ever in the same no, scene together? No. no. That's a good point. I was looking forward to their, their confrontation where Night Beast just... Yeah. Gives Drago a taste, of his, yeah, yeah. a taste of his own medicine. But. Drago doesn't really have a point to the movie. No. Like, he's really no. not... Not essential at all. <laughs> Every movie needs a sexual assault guy. <laughs> it's like Walking Dead. You're battling zombies, or in this case, you're battling a night beast. But really, the humans are the ones that you really got to worry about. Oh, well, yeah. doesn't Jack try to save her eventually, though? And, and fails. Drago beats him up, too? Yeah, Jamie has to come. Jamie comes and saves him. Jamie shoots Drago, like, in the back, basically, as he's about to wail on oh, right, Sheriff right. Jack and a lot. This is, like, this is the part where Lisa got her clothes ripped, and all <laughs> Ruth wants to do is help her change her clothes. <laughs> like, that's the priority. Did you notice? Okay, we all saw she had, like, a, like, whatever kind of red top on or whatever. She's wearing heels after that point, too. She has white high mm -hmm. heels she's wearing for the rest of the movie. Very practical when you're <laughs> dealing with a night beast. Yeah, just yeah. keep your goddamn boots on or whatever. <laughs> So, yeah, um, we kind of get to the climax here with this electrical wire plot thing that they have come up with to take care of the Night Beast. Jamie sacrifices himself, and man, you want to talk about a, another great death in this movie. 
his ass gets fried. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. fried. Yeah, <laughs> Kentucky fried, baby. <laughs> they, they, it breaks or something, and he's got to like hold it to be a, like a conduit and like a conductor. Like he's like, just flip the switch, Ruth. <laughs> and it's like, it's like a uh, a power. I mean, like a, a out, like a in your house, a breaker the, box, a breaker box. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, I, think, I yeah. think the whole power station was just another house, right? Yeah, and I just imagine. Yeah. That. no, yeah, it was. I love that. Yeah. I love when the eyeballs are still intact. Like, holding a loose. So he's really kind of the hero of this whole thing. Never forget. Never forget Jamie. This is a nice flannel shirt he had on. His final <laughs> line is, hit it, Ruth, now. <laughs> I just hope my last words are half as poignant as those. Yeah. So Jay, uh, Jamie sacrifices himself. What exactly happens to the Night Beast? Uh, he gets stuck in the wires, and they're electrocuting them. And then he just explodes and falls into his, like, chunks. How did he get stuck in the wires, though? Like, how did they trap him? I, he's... The the plot said so. Mo- plot yeah, movie-making magic is what happened. <laughs> There's not a tremendous... Uh, like, Night Beast, he doesn't have any sort of, like, drive as to, like, where he's trying to get to or what he's trying he's to do. He's trying to get off the goddamn planet. How? How is he doing that? By killing, Paul. How else would you get off the planet? <laughs> He's pissed. It's like falling down with uh, with an alien. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to kill his way to his home world. Rating time. Well, you know what, Richard? You're our uh, guest of honor today. The way that we normally do this, we, we have a unique rating system. I'm going to say for, for Night Beast, in honor of J.J. Abrams doing the score for this film, let's go one out of 100 J.J. Jingles. Richard, what do you give Night Beast? One out of a hundred. JJ Jingles. I I give it a seventy-seven okay. because I like that number, and uh, I I think I didn't know that about JJ Abrams. That's incredible. Yeah, I, I I'm gonna I want to look that up and like. I think there's an AV Club article about yeah, it. Yeah, that's what I read. I read it in the AV Club. I, I I kept having this thought though. I wanted to say. Um, it would be a great movie to have on at like a party with the volume down, <laughs> <laughs> and like I don't, I, or like at a bar with the volume down. It's like I couldn't. I loved watching it, and I almost didn't even need to know what they were saying and like right. the reason you behind all don't of it. Really? Yeah, I just liked looking at it, and I'm like, oh, I love it. I love the way it looks, and I mean, I it's agree. a true like '82, dude. That's way. That's so old. I can't imagine trying to shoot something back then oh yeah props to the filmmakers i mean don doler has made some movies and he he's he passed away but yeah, i believe he's made this very same movie like what, five times <laughs> he basically just made the same movie over and over <laughs> like he's got the alien factor he's got this one he's got galaxy invader uh there's a couple other ones that that he did that, and it's just kind of the same thing over and over again it's weird yeah, well this one is literally a remake of alien factor like this is it's the same people reprising their roles and that same kind of right. stuff there's just one instead of multiple this time so if you just do a search for it you yeah should be able totally to find it. so i'd say 77 jj jingles out of 100 and you know jingle all the way very nice uh <laughs> let me go to chris hudson you know, I I think I liked it almost as much as Richard. Uh, just a little, just a couple JJ jingles less. Um, I'm gonna give with uh, 75 JJ jingles. All right, Which very nice. Good. I enjoyed it. Jason Halls. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it quite a bit, and I enjoyed all of the uh, joking leading up to the this podcast. So for that <laughs> total experience, I'll go. I'm gonna go 72 JJ jingles. Okay, <laughs> nice, Mr. Mike Hayes. Mr. Paul Brooks, I thought this was a great pick. Thank you for having us watch this. I had a great time doing so. Oh, thank you. Um, it, oh, man, it was just a real fun flick. I think everyone should check it out. It was a good time. I'm going to go I'm going 70 JJ Jingles. All right. Not very bad, nice. Man. Very nice. Um, I have to concur with pretty much everybody. I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought, uh, y- you know, in terms of horror movies, schlocky 80s horror movies, this has got just about everything that you would want out of something like that. Um, like I said at the beginning of the show, you got your three Bs. Blood, beasts, some boobs. Maybe not the best boobs in the world, but they're there. I think it's uh, a lot of fun to watch. 
you know, the only minor complaint that I would have is I feel like towards the second half of the film, uh, it does slow down a little bit. You know, it's like you said, Chris, after the uh, laser gun isn't there anymore, and Mike, you mentioned it too, things kind of uh, slow down just a little bit. So that's my only complaint. You know, it came out in 1982. I'm going to go 82 J.J. Jingles. Yeah. Uh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good year is the year I was born. Ah, there you go. <laughs> well, Richard, um, really want to say appreciate you coming out and chatting with us yeah, about Night thank Beast. You. Yeah, I love brother. this Thanks. shit, dude. I love movies like this. I love... I just love horror. I love stuff like this. So, yeah, it's really awesome. Before we go, I want to talk a little bit more about some of the uh, projects that you're involved in, and, and then we can tell our listeners how they can uh, contact you on social media and whatnot. You're in a movie, and we're going to link the trailer down below. You're in a movie, and it's called... Uh, I, I actually hope that I'm saying this wrong. The Unquenchable Thirst... For bone nor juice. Yes. <laughs> um, the unquenchable thirst for bow nor juice. Right. Uh, and you are in the film as a hobo, if I have that correct. Yes. And you have a line in the trailer I, that really <laughs> caught my attention. Can, can we get you to do a, a rendition of your line from I the play, trailer? Uh, I play Jennifer, the homeless man. What's and your name? Jennifer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you stutter. <laughs> it's uh it's a musical it's actually a musical and really it's wow. yeah i play jennifer and there's a scene where i go i think it's in the trailer i go how am i gonna wipe my butt <laughs> <laughs> so i want to say that i really hope you're at like an olive garden or something and like somebody comes up to you and always wants you to say that line <laughs> i would love that Are it's a pretty great line me? definitely check out the trailer posted below if you're on our website it looks just super super <laughs> strange and then richard lastly let's uh if people want to connect with you you know on social media and whatnot what where do they need to go um, for that i just twitter is like my main thing and uh it's at dick bane that's my name, <laughs> at Dick Bain. Well, Richard, thank you very much for chatting with yeah, us once thank again. thank you for having me. Thank you guys for having Thanks, me. Richard. Thanks, no, Richard. It's been great. Thanks. Thanks. On the next episode of B-Movie Mania... <laughs> oh, boy. Why, why do I have this feeling of dread right now? <laughs> uh, Richard, you picked a good episode to be on, because next time isn't going to be so fun. <laughs> <laughs> next time, there will be a fungus among us, because we are watching the movie Fungicide. What? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, you're wondering what that is. I'm going to tell you. What happens when a crazed scientist gets a forced weekend away at a bed and breakfast? Mushrooms and mayhem. Death stalks the shocked guests as mushrooms of all shapes and sizes run rampant through the woods. IMDb's estimated budget for this film, $140. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Oh, boy. Oh. Yeah. I'm going to need some bourbon. Speaking of bourbon, Uncle Lloydie, take us out. Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydie? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They're touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! Hey, B-Movie Maniacs, thanks for listening to that episode of B-Movie Mania. Subscribe to us on YouTube if you want more cool episodes and more cool content. Find us on iTunes or any other podcast thing out there. And also go to bmoviemania.com. We got cool merch over there that you can pick up. Go check it out. Thanks for listening. Goodbye! <laughs>